Hey guys, Jared James here, and I wanted to talk to you today about a common question that most realtors have, which is how do I get more listings? I mean, it's not some kind of a surprise to know that that's where most of the uh, power is. That's where you can get more business. That's where you can pick up more buyers. That's where you, and let's face it, I mean, not all of us have them though. And so it's the old question like, well, how do I get listings if I don't already have listings? How do I get new business if I don't already have business? And so I want to talk to you about this thing we have called the new listing prospecting letter, which is something we use with our students, which has amazing uh, results to really get that. And you know, when you look at it, I mean, when you have listings, now you have the ability to pick up business on Zillow and Trulia and listings to leads and all these kinds of places. But it's like most people would always say to me, they'd say, well, how do I get them if I don't have them? And you know, how do I get new buyers if I don't have listings? And I used to always tell people, I'd say, look, many times to catch the mice, you have to have the cheese. And so how do we get the cheese, which in this case will be the listings? And so we use this thing called the new listing prospecting letter. And we follow a very simple process, which excuse the writing guys, I'm a lefty and writing on a board is not always the easiest thing to do. But we follow this process of locate, send, and follow up. And so here's what it is. We locate the areas that we would like to have business in. We locate neighborhoods that we would like to have listings in, where we would like to have buyers going in there, where we would like to have business in. And you know that can come for many different reasons, whether it's uh, close to you, whether it's a price point that you want to be in, whatever it happens to be. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate. Once we locate where we want that in or where we see that we want business, what we're going to do next is we're going to send this letter. And what we're going to do is we're first going to be looking out for in that area uh, you know, when a new listing has come on because we need a new listing to come on there. And it doesn't have to be our listing. It can be any listing. Once that listing comes on, we know that within 30 days, one other property is going to be listed within that area. That's what statistics tell us. We also know that within six months, two to three more houses are going to be listed. We also know that of these people, almost seven out of ten of them are unrepresented, meaning that they do not have a current agent they'll be working with that they know they can go to. They're going to find somebody basically. And so what we're going to do is we're going to locate it, then we're going to wait for a listing or if one just came up and we're going to send out this thing. This is your new listing prospecting letter that you now have access to. And very quickly, the new listing prospecting letter just says, hi, first name. By the way, guys, there's all sorts of programs you can use to pull the nearest 50 or 100 houses, depending on how the neighborhood is and how close the houses are together. It'll put their first name in. It'll give you all sorts of information. And so it says, hi, first name. I'm not sure that we've ever met in person before, but I wanted to make you aware that your neighbor's house at, and it's going to plug in the address, just went up for sale for the listed price. More importantly, though, dot, dot, dot. This has changed the value of your home. Now, that's an important part of this letter because we didn't say your value went up. We didn't say your value went down. We said it's changed the value of your home. Words are everything. What did they hear, though? They heard my value went up. The last thing I would ever want to do is to bother you with worthless, worthless information, but I'm also aware that when a house goes up for sale in a neighborhood, usually others want to know what the value of their property is as well. If you're one of these people and would like to know how your value has changed and doesn't want to have to pay to find out or waste your time with inaccurate online property value estimates, please don't hesitate to contact me at your earliest convenience. I would love the opportunity to serve you without you having to feel any obligation in return. You can call me at insert your number, or email me at, because we want them to communicate in the way that they want to and they're comfortable with until they have some kind of context with you to want to be meeting you in person, and I'll be sure to get you whatever you need. I look forward to hearing back from you and then your info. Now, by the way, because this is customizable and it's in Word format for you, if I were you after that call me at or email me at, I would add something like, or you can reach out to me on Facebook or Twitter, here's my handle, here's my Facebook address. I would do something like that because you want to meet people where they're at. So you're going to send this out to them. And then you're going to wait, and maybe about a week or so, and if they don't contact you back, that's fine. But then what you're going to do is you're going to take the next step, which is follow-up. Okay. Now, this is the most difficult step, but it's the one that has to be done to really get the business. And follow-up is you're going to go to those houses that you sent this to, the nearest 50 houses, whatever it may be, and you're actually going to knock on the door. And you're going to bring information from that neighbor's house because that's value. You don't want to just go show up, but that's value. And you're going to go knock on the door, and you're going to say, hey, I don't know if you got my letter, but your neighbor's house just went up for sale. Uh, I didn't want to bother you, but I thought you might want to get some info on it or see what it was going up for. And you're going to see at that point that some people are going to be like, yeah, what'd it go up for? What's, you know, what's the deal with it? What's whatever? And other people are going to not be interested. The people that aren't interested, remember, when you send this out, one person is going to go up for sale within 30 days, two to three within six months. We are not looking for the 48 or 49 people who are not looking to sell in the next 30 days. We're looking for the one or two. So it's okay if they're not interested and you're going to move on. You don't want to become a bother to them, especially if you're going to start geographically farming that area and start sending stuff to them. And so you say, thanks, no problem. 
if they do start to show interest, though, and go, yeah, what did it go up for? And you start giving them info. Your next question is very simple, too. Would you like to know what yours is worth? Would you like to see how it's changed your value? Now, if you want to really go to the next step and really get extra credit, if I were you, I would beforehand, very generic, but I would put together electronic appraisals, estimates of value, not really, you know, arranged from here to here, and I would have that ready for them so I could show it to them and say, hey, your, your property is probably worth between this and this, but it's tough to tell without me seeing the inside, what you've done to it, the, the subtle things you've done to it, the, the effort you've put into it. And now you're really starting a conversation, and they're either going to take it to the next level and say, yeah, well, why don't you come in and take a look? Or again, they're going to be one of those 48 or 49 out of the 50 who really don't have any interest. But again, they're not the one we're looking for, okay? This is called actually going out and making something happen, creating business without just waiting for your phone to ring. I'm going to tell you, one of our students actually sent out, uh, went through this campaign and got an email. I just got this email actually a few weeks ago, and the email was to her from one of the people that she sent it out to. And by the way, this was a brand new agent, so she really didn't have that much of an idea of what she was doing. And she sent it out, and she got an email from one of her clients, or from one of these people that got the, uh, the letter, that, that the subject of the email was, best promo letter I've seen in quite a while. They loved how personal it sounded. They loved how it was giving them value, no obligation in return. They loved that, and now they were setting up an appointment to get together to see what their house was worth. Now, one more step I want to take you on here. Some of you heard this third part about follow-up, and you got a little bit nervous, and you were kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't really want to go knock on doors. I never wanted to do that kind of stuff because I wasn't sure that it worked, and I wasn't... Here's what I want you to do, because in this case, this kind of a thing can work. What I want you to do is this. I want you to take a board in front of you or a piece of paper, and I want you to write this thing. I want you to write, and now you're going to see the left-handed, uh, how we write on boards here, but I want you to see, and I want you to write best case down one side, and then I want you to write on the other side worst case. And you're just going to have to trust me that that says Worst case, okay? And here's what I want you to do. When you're thinking about going out now and you're actually going to go knock on these doors and you're going to bring value, and again, if they're not interested, you're going to say thanks anyway and you're going to move on. But if they are interested, now you have something. I want you to say, what's the best case, worst case? So if I go knock on this door and they're not interested, what is the worst case scenario that can happen? And I'll do this right now. They say no. They get angry and want you to leave. It's terrible handwriting, but they get angry, they want you to leave. They say no. They say whatever it may be. How has this really harmed you? What's the best case? Best case scenario is they list their house. Okay. Best case, they list their house. Worst case, they get angry, they say no, they, you know, whatever it may be. I want you to run these through your head because many times the things that we fear, the things that we're you know, afraid are going to happen, the things that keep us from doing the things that actually create business are really not even that scary at all. And we need to go there in our mind. We need to go there and say, how bad would that be? And so by me not taking this next step, which is follow-up, it's not just because most of you are going to go here and you're just going to send. Not good enough. Follow-up is where the business is actually found. Follow-up. And so... When you go to that step, you need to say to yourself, what's the worst case that can happen? They could say no, they could whatever. What's the best case? They could list their home with me that's worth a thousand, you know, $6,000, $10,000, whatever it may be. And now you need to think to yourself, which one would you rather have? Would I rather take the chance of gaining another five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 or would I rather lose that opportunity? Because statistics tell us, you do it enough times, this is what's going to happen. We have thousands of students that are seeing these exact results. Or would I rather miss out on that and complain about not having business and complain about why nothing's happening to me and complain about all this stuff simply because I'm afraid of someone saying no to me? And yet the action we're taking is guaranteeing that you get this worst case regardless because they don't even have the opportunity to say yes if you don't get in front of them. So I want to encourage you to do that, okay? Guys, I hope we're connected on Facebook and Twitter and all of these kinds of places. I hope I get the chance to meet you someday in person. But really, this is just one simple thing that I want you to start to make a part of your daily process that you're doing every day, that you're figuring out, so that you're actually working on your business. Because I have this belief, I have this belief that if you're not working on your business, you will go out of business. People are successful for very reasons. You can't put the ingredients in the oven for a pizza and expect a lasagna to come out. You've got to do the stuff that's going to make you successful. Guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.